next level. Yeah, I know you heard about it. Motherfucker. You know I'm bad it, bad it. And don't you ever doubt it. I'm incomparable. That's why they staring though. Turn up the stereo. Check it out, check it out, check it out. I'm on the next level, next, next, next level on the next level. They all trying to catch up to my next level, next, next, next level on the next level. Check it out, check it out, check it out. La 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 you like that old school Back in the music That shit is old News I'm popping through the ceiling That's my motto That's my motto I lead They follow I'm a just like a sauna New York to California You ain't seen nothing like this Nobody do it like this Fuck. I'm on the next level, next, next, next level on the next level. They all trying to catch up to my next level, next, next, next level on the next level. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Glasses look a little crooked. <laughs> Gotta get some new glasses, guys. All right, here comes Shifu, my brother from another mother, my wingman, my co host. Shifu. <laughs> hey, How you doing, Shifu? I'm doing good. Much more. You are doing good. Yeah, it's a it's really nice day. And yesterday I was so tired, I don't know why. But. Uh, it happens. I have those days. It's so many nights without good sleep. It catches up to you. Yeah. Also. Yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. Okay. So we have about 14 people here. I only did one song on the intro. And if anybody's listening to this live stream later on down the road, I wanted to get right into it because we are going live tonight with CFM on his channel at eight o'clock and could be probably, you know, a couple hours that we're going to do here um we are in the process of finding language and explanation and um, validation if you will for this new field of study uh meltology which is the study and exploration of melted structures that seem to have been melted from some kind of extreme heat event and this being a new field of research uh it it needs new language to go with it and uh, we are just scratching the surface to this topic, to this new, uh, to, to this new level of research that's uh, really captivated a lot of people's mindsets, and a lot of people are starting to see it now. But along with seeing it comes, what happened? Why did it happen? What are the explanations for these different things that we see across the plane that we can tell have heat damage to them? But we can't fully explain how things happen. We can see a beautiful brick wall with um, huge boulders and things down at the bottom or maybe midway through the wall. And then it's perfectly bricked up top. Like, did they build it that way? Did something else happen? Are these uh, products of the X Factor extreme heat event that took place? Um, one of the groundbreaking things that Shapu came up with and, and credit to Shapu for a lot of this, this amazing research. Um, you're really spearheading this type of research, Shapu. Thank you so much for all your diligence, I have to say. Um, I just bringing... bring out uh, the, the, the information that's already there, you know, to, to, to the people. I'm, I'm not creating any, anything, you know. It's, uh, it's already all there. You, we, we just need to put it together and show the people how things are, 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 
are going and apply it to what we're learning here. Um, a lot of stuff that we've learned about the grain growth and the polymorphs and explaining why you have beautiful brick and then it turns into like weird rock and blocks and what looks like even cobblestones and big boulders set in a wall of brick. We've explained that out. It's called um, the grain growth. And uh, we are going to cover that again to, to kind of like help slide us in and tie us over to where else we're going to go with this because now we're going to ta tackle basalt columns and what are they and how did they form and are they a byproduct of this X Factor event? Is it part of an actual building structure of some sort? What are these things? And uh, so we're going to be getting into all this stuff. Um, interesting a lot enough, a lot of the stuff that we look at, at are on a microscopic level. And as we take it to the plain wide event that took place, we're going macro with all of this. Same with the grain growth. That's what we did with that. You can see the examples of it. And we're going to actually bring that up. Um, Shapu, do you want to get that uh, grain growth stuff up? And we can um, show some comparisons, like what the grain growth is and how, how it shapes out and stuff. And some of the stuff maybe we see in these walls and bricks and stuff. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. Everybody can get a, a baseline understanding of what we've uncovered so far in this uh, new field of study called Meltology, which I don't expect to see it in college in colleges or on any kind of rosters anytime soon. <laughs> You'll see it here on this channel, though, and on Shavu's channel, because we don't want the mainstream to get a hold of this stuff. The only thing they would do is tear it up, shred it up, and throw it out, and just discard it and try to discredit all of us. Yeah, but they, they already use all of this, but they use it for other purposes, you know. They don't, what they do now today, they, they, they tell you something, it's for this and only this, you know, but it can be applied to more than one uses, you know, so. Exactly. But in science, they, they use it for only for one thing. And it can be translated I'm to. Really, I'm really excited about this show. I've been thinking about that, it all night. <laughs> but we use this uh, micro level because everything happens quickly and, and more quickly and you can really see the effect of, of uh, the the melting of stuff and the recrystallization when it, it's cooling down mm -hmm. and something that we cannot see uh, on the macro level because it supposedly takes millions of years to happen. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, we kind of try to tie all of this together and make comparison to what exists into from the macro to the micro and yeah gonna just show you stuff and what we are talking here today it's our thoughts and really uh what we we have found that and what we compared to it's you can follow what you what you we say you can when you see it on a microscopic level and then you take it to the macro, like say a giant wall that we're looking at, you know, it all makes sense what we're seeing now. We're trying to make sense out of a lot of this stuff. We're trying to figure out why half the wall is cooked out and ridiculous looking with janky rock and everything. And right next to it is a beautiful brick again. And then you'll see a pattern of that sometimes going through a um, an aqueduct, an aquifer or whatever that thing is, uh, or or why it would even take that pattern in the heat process itself. What exactly was this heat? What caused it? I think the closer do we get to what's happening will take us closer to what this event actually consisted of, where this heat came from, and what type of heat are we talking about here? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah I, I see Brian Stavely. Yeah, we're, hey, we're just taking pieces of the puzzle and putting them together and trying to make the the big picture of it that's that's all we do you know yeah i mean we're not going to come out here and say oh this is melted that's melted we're coming with with um scientific evidence of uh before during and after the whole event itself i mean it's undeniable at this point if you can't see that things are melted whether you agree that mountains are melted buildings or just that building over there is melted in that melt is going to be a variation of heat differentials going on there and we could see that type of thing all through the plane. And we're even seeing it underground. What they tell us are these underground cities with these pickaxe marks and all this stuff like that. We're going to explain all this stuff, guys, to the best of our ability. 
You yep. can say it's a theory. I think when we have the proof on a microscopic level and we can apply it to the macro, I think it goes beyond theory at that point. It seems to be legit. In my in my view, this is what we're seeing, yeah. 100%. Yeah, can that's... I recreate the X Factor event on a grand scale to see if it's really real and not just on a micro level? No, I can't. I'm sorry, but I can, we can do it on a micro level. <laughs> yeah. So you, you don't need to believe everything we say. You just need to listen and look and, and then compare to what you know and just apply what you take, what you need, you know, and we're not here to convince anyone that this is what it is. We're just showing what we find. That's all. Exactly. All right. All right. So we're so, going to look at the green growth and um, polymorphs and what that those shapes take under uh, heat and pressure. Yeah, we'll just start with. Uh, this is a. I I pull it out out the the, the Facebook uh, page Miltology. One hundred and one. Uh, if anybody wants to follow uh, at the same time and read i'll just put it in the chat all right so this is just a overview to to tell you what what this sintering is is the forming of uh, solid mass through heat and pressure the melting point of without melting to the point of liquefaction you know not not melting to a liquid like lava but it's uh, just rearrange all the atoms and fuse together into one big piece, you know. Yeah, do you hear that? One big piece. How many times have we said that the bricks go block? They melt into each other and form one larger piece. God, I paused it. <laughs> yeah, and you know, a sintering occurs naturally in mineral deposit and manufacturing process and everything because the, 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 the temperature, you know, uh, doesn't of the material doesn't meet the melting point so uh anyway this is why well, i use always the comparison with uh, forging metals because mm -hmm. uh, that's what i'm more like <laughs> uh, not used to but uh, i know a lot about about this and uh, you can apply the same process because you can use powdered grain bigger grain or anything and make one big piece uh, of of metal, you know, by melting it. Uh, not with direct fire, just uh, fervent heat, you know. Fervent heat, like they say in the Bible. Yeah, because the direct fire, it's too 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 direct, too hot, and you can break stuff re really easy. And uh, again, this is just to go overview what we already showed. Yes. You know, what is sintering? It's just a process of putting stuff in high temperature to make it a solid piece. Mm -hmm. Just and the how same. many times have we seen these walls are melted together, like, and they're in precarious positions, but they're, it's all fused together from the melt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And also, so look. Heat, I wanted to read the heat and pressure required for sintering process is than the materials melting point. So we're keeping that in mind. We see these buildings that are mostly melted, half melted, uh, melted on the inside, but the outside still looks good, all this stuff. Yeah. So we're seeing different levels of heat damage throughout. Yes, and this, this effect just uh, has pressure enough to reduce all the porous space between the materials, you know, bricks, or uh, squeeze the loose material into a solid lump, you know, mm -hmm. when we see these these brick popping up into yeah boulders and stuff and with the the mortar just uh, melting out and then yes. then the the brick takes its place you know and also the use of pressure and heat like everything within earth and they said with glacial formation you know with this is only so um I've got more. This is just more stuff uh, that we already covered. Metallic powder sintering. This is what I like to use. Plastic. It's all the same process with everything, you know, because every type of melt is the same for every uh, material. You know. 
and also they use electric, electric. currents and plasma right. which is the ones we're basically focusing on yeah because uh, these are these current are like um um uh, induction current you know um it's only affect the 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 the, the, the metals and stuff depending on the, the type of current used. but this this spark plasma you know everybody talks about this plasma maybe plasma effect that uh, made this happen you know but they use the same type of thing to create this kind of a fusion mm -hmm. Right, microwave also is the same type of effect. And we're looking at the earthly plane as a motherboard free energy grid system yeah. made up of at the baseline sub superstructure, in my opinion, and it's a theory. I can't go down there and check, but I think it's all brick, guys. <laughs> yeah. And bricks store energy. This is key to what we're going to be talking about here. Yes. And also, we, we just covered sintering, that, that, that's the melting stuff into one big one. And you, you got this grown great grain growth also. That is the, that affect the crystal grain, that is everything, crystalline material. It's in every, everything that exists here, water, rocks, hair, <laughs> there's, there's tiny crystal everywhere. But, but this grain growth, that's what we call here um, balloon rocking. Uh, mm -hmm. depending on the the purity of the the thing and uh, how the heat travels and everything it can have different effects and it can be a growth to normal growth that you see in it uh, you can see that everything is uh, perfectly equal everywhere or you can have that uh, kind of uh, uneven growth yes that creates those guys other other stuff you know this is just a a graphic showing the temperature here you can yeah. see that you know what's funny are. though Shapu, the, this graphic and these little examples down the bottom we could see all these different levels of heat damage in one wall but in one yes. location you know? yes exactly exactly that's just tell you that there were uh different temperature going through this wall all over the, the place and different pressure and different it's not um, always uh, the same ev everywhere. Exactly. Uh, but uh, here you can clearly see that, uh, like you, Jen just said, all the type of grain that we can see. The, let's just think that this is brick. Each layers here are bricks, and you can see there's some deformation, some rock growing. I think I've got like a better one. This is an example of uh, this this irregular grain growth. You know, these one are all the same, but this one is much bigger, and these ones same. Just like uh, I don't know if it, this one I have this these, uh, uh, and they also look they apply it in geology to because yep. they know they to know. yeah to sort what kind of grain they are. Mm -hmm. you know? to sand to very fine sand to like pebbles they they, they they use it but they don't they don't call it the same things because they separate they compartmentalize everything you know this is yeah. for geology this is for melting smelting you know but they're all the same if you know about all of them you, you will see that they're all the same thing because in smelting you can use different type of grain to achieve different type of structural bond so uh anyway um because i i i'm looking to what i posted here um, mm -hmm. i think i've got uh, i don't do i have pictures of actual <laughs> brick wall uh, i don't i don't remember but i i know i have some mm -hmm. to to show uh look this is uh, a grain uh, growth in metal uh, forging. This is what a uh, metal forge uh, looks like uh, under a microscope. You know, it's inter interesting that it has these ridges on it. Each piece has oh, like the, just coming up the sides of them. Yes, like yeah, the but, upper upper right hand corner one. 
this this link this this yeah, uh, that one, line. And go to go to go to D. Go over to D, over to the right hand corner on D, and you can really see the ridges on that one. Yeah. So yeah. That, that looks like what we see a lot on the basalt columns too. Yeah, but these are like uh, what you we were looking for yesterday. These uh, heat uh, striations. Yes, heat striations. This is what uh, they, they will. But they'll I will. <laughs> they'll tell you their pickaxe marks if you're in a cave. Yeah. <laughs> but you can see that uh, the the grain you you cannot see uh, when you look at with your eye. You, you don't see you, you. For us, it's it looks like a smooth surface and everything. But this is a microscope, and it looks like uh, any wall that we cyclopean wall or megalithic wall that you you see you see polygonal masonry so, walls yeah. Yeah. yeah like this just just exactly like this, this wall, guys yeah. just look at it <laughs> this is the microscopic view of uh, forging mm -hmm. grains and this is a wall that has been uh, they say built by someone but the, the they they cannot explain how they, they fit every piece like a puzzle piece you know close exactly. together it, it grew that way from the heat yes this is what happens to these places with different heat different differentials yeah it changed it changed the, the structure of it like just like like this you know if you take powder and you you, you heat it it gonna change into uh, uh, this a certain point, and the more heat, it is it create pressure on it also while while yes. you heat it. So this is will just come together, and also you you also here they put sintering heads, and it's mostly they put um, they call it a flux, and mostly they use a powder fine powder like uh, what they use again lime lime to put to make the bond so mm -hmm. exactly like bricks lime is mortar yes. to make the bond so they, they use it to put it to to fill the cracks and when it eats enough it creates like uh, this perfect pattern when this this type melt because uh, the mortar will melt way before the the brick. That's right. And also here, this this one it's better. That's the one I was wanting to show because you can see that this is the temperature line and the grain size, and depending on the the recrystallization time and stuff, it it creates not only the heat change it but when it cools down, depending on the the, the fast the, the the not the fast how, how fast the solidification process is. If it's quick or if it takes a little bit longer, you're going to get different results. Yes. Yes. Again, just another example of what we see in bricks, and this is real rocks that are actually <laughs> were bricks at some point. Again, they use the same type of of uh, comparison with uh, the the other type of, of green growth. Okay, so um, this is what what we show. Uh, earlier, but oh yeah, that's one. I like this picture. Yeah, because it looks exactly like a. A polygonal wall <clears throat> that you will find everywhere yeah and this one right yeah this is just the perfect green growth and this something happened the material wasn't like perfect or so many factors that can change the structure when it it's heating up all right so just this one also polygonal wall just perfect one take a normal it's almost the same size everywhere but at some point this is abnormal grain and there's one boulder and that's why some places we we ask you know why did they put the boulder right in there you know between the bricks but they did it it just happened this way that's during right. this 
this it all makes spec. sense now because before it doesn't make you got to make it make sense guys okay <laughs> so that's what we're trying to do here on this channel we're trying to make it make sense and i really feel this makes sense yeah because i could like uh, show every uh, section of this like maybe i could like uh, just do it right now because i'm talking in that i don't show any pictures of comparison oh, yeah. there's some polygonal walls and stuff yeah i want to show like one uh, you know like like this one we'll see. okay guys so here's a good let's, example let's see that's it's all brick but they will tell you oh, oh they just put out the material that they found but why did they put these small bricks? no all of this at one point was all bricks that's but, right but because of uh, this you can see it's kind of this one yes you can see these are perfect bricks and then while it recrystallize some of them just pops out and change change into you know just kind of like this yeah these are great examples so you can look at a wall like this and you scratch your head you know you're like what's going on here how the hell did they build this i mean was this just a style back then you know clinker bricks and all that <laughs> or are we looking at something else here and clearly we've been looking at something else this whole time yeah this is amazing shifu i mean absolutely amazing this this is the scientific evidence that we need to further the research in meltology which is the study and exploration of these melted structures trying to figure out the dynamics and the science behind it and, uh, and and verbalize this in such a way that everyone can understand it and grasp it. Because trust me, we just came upon this yesterday and we're still trying to wrap our heads around it. Not this particular stuff, the grain growth, but what we're about to show you here. Yeah. This stuff we covered, uh, what, last year, Shapu, correct? Yeah, almost a year now, yeah. Almost just a year ago. And, uh, and every day we're getting closer and closer and more answers to this piece to the puzzle here. Yeah, because uh, geologists are, and archaeologists will tell you that this that they use different kind of materials to build their wall. You know, uh, this is just one of my favorite ones that they say is, you know, in the bottom it's megalithic, and on the middle it's another civilization, and at the top where the smaller stuff is, it's a whole another civilization. Yeah, like I mean, uh, that kind of stuff. Like, like this one also, it's really you can see that there are bricks in between all these really growths crazy growths <laughs> and we were talking about how they they lump up into one larger piece look at these large boulders here yeah so again the same same type of right, i think uh yeah, this one is just a 3d representation right yeah and don't oh, forget I love this one. This everything is really yeah everything that happens is a 3d dimensional you know it's it's happening yeah, and a lot of these we're seeing way. just the surface of what happened on the surface we don't get to see underneath or how deep it goes or behind it yeah. but this is a uh, really interesting stuff here yeah Fine. these this is just bubbles clinging together just to make a representation of how uh it, it it becomes just one bubble if you continue to blow air you know right and these are comparison for with polygonal walls and the green growth and mm -hmm. it, it does the same type of effect you know they they think they it's Go absolutely ahead. astounding because archaeologists have been all over this for decades telling us that these are some kind of megalithic builders they don't know how they did it they must have heated the rock reshaped it and molded it into place you see how they gave us a little truth there it was superheated it did mold into these these formations yes but humanity had nothing to do with it as far as actually constructing it this way no this is a byproduct of an extreme heat event that took place yes but don't forget that we always try to mimic what we see. So yes, at some places people try to make it like it, like like this, you know. But you see the difference; it's not so perfect. And this is why they cannot fit even a thin piece of paper between these rocks and stuff because they are literally fused together. 
Yes. Yeah, oh, look, this is just the one. Uh, now now I, I'm getting to the pictures. Yeah, just different type of of what people cannot explain or think that they yeah, okay. This is the the same type. Okay. I can go into this folder now just because this is like a representation again of some growth you know that goes on with the eat and pressure with things um so yes uh what else like in this one this the, they say that when this brick was made oh some pieces of uh, quartz crystal just got into it but mm. it's probably due to the heat because look it it it's pushing out from the inside you know uh-huh you can see it and this is only in one brick that is it's growing like this out of it because of the um uh, what's I don't remember what I want to, to compare it to, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Centered and melted. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Just, just some other type of metal growth. Because that's how they, they, they do it. You know, we, we always see, oh, okay, yeah, we know that when you eat something and you you apply pressure like uh, like forging you know you can make something but you you don't know how and what is going on on the microscopic level just this is just showed us and the cooling process is extremely important as well yeah but if if we didn't have any of these uh, microscopic we could find the same thing in nature uh, like just in those walls they mm -hmm. will tell, tell you that uh, we built it but actually it's the heat that made it it all makes sense now half the people in archaeology don't know how this stuff was built they come up with all their little theories and start scratching their head and say it's some ancient civilization that used to be here and they were megalithic builders and blah blah blah, blah, blah and all this stuff like that <laughs> yeah and you know we just talk it up to you know millions of years and all this other crap so we can go a little bit longer on this. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. No, but you think you show not. a little bit more of whatever you want to show, and then we'll get into the the meat. <laughs> no, Are you no, good? It's, I guess we're done with the, just covering because you can you you can uh, go into any group or on my on my YouTube channel. You can see the. The, the older video that we did that is longer, probably an hour long of showing and reading everything. Um, but uh, this is, was just a short version because we want to- Actually, if you watch our, our live stream, uh, Incredible Evidence, Mountains or Melted Buildings, uh, on, you'll see it on my, um, on my YouTube page here. Uh, we go over all this, because this is when we came upon this information. It was that live stream. Credible evidence mountains or buildings or mountains were buildings, excuse me. So uh, we're looking at basalt columns now. We're trying to figure out what the hell those things are, why we find them everywhere across the plain, not just in specific locations. They are, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> and they always blame it on volcanism. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to, to show something just before. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure. I wanted to. Uh, start with this. I forgot about it. Whatever you want. <laughs> Did I? Oh, no. We got 28 people here now. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, just to re remind people what what our bricks are made of just before, you know. Because most, you know, 55% of, of bricks are made with uh, silica inside of it. And silica is 
uh, what you would call the lime or no the um no a quartz 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 crystal quartz crystal which responds differently under this heat and pressure as well as silica all yeah, these different elements that you see here are going to respond differently under the same exact heat but each one will respond differently yeah yeah because they have all have like a, 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 a role to play in these uh, in bricks you know here you can say silica just sand you know the sand um, grain you know depending on which type of uh, type of grain of sand you you use it will be would make your brick better or weak you know but what i wanted to to cover is the use of lime mm -hmm. in in bricks because they put some lime in bricks not only in the mortar that they use lime because uh, mortar is mostly made out of lime but they put lime in bricks because it enables the silica to to melt uh, at 1650,000 degrees and bind the particle of brick together that's the the, the, the glue if you want to the call it yeah the binding agent yeah i got gotcha. you to hold yeah, it all together because, we use it also to put uh, to make the mortar you know also mm -hmm. it's a binding agent there mm -hmm. but the thing is about uh, if it's like a chemical process making a brick you know you cannot just if you make any type of brick from anything you, you might be uh, lucky and have a really good brick but if you put um, uh, what is it no oh, here if you put uh, too much lime, you know, at uh, 11,000 degrees, lime acts as a catalyst to elevate the, the, the temperature. I gotcha. Just to make it, uh, to make it fuse, you know, uh, because they, they use it wow. uh, inside of the brick, the temperature rose, not outside. So the, the temperature of the, the oven is this, but because of the lime, the temperature use uh, go up. All right. They slightly fuse silica, you know, as strong cement. Excess lime in brick will cause vitrification of brick and will cause bricks to melt. You hear that, guys? <laughs> so you have to have the right amount of lime in there or the brick will lose their shape, their shape and become disfigured. And what we see, and I, I just said that lime is mortar, you know, mm -hmm. and this heat event happen with the mortar and that's what we see everywhere that the mortar like melts and fuse with the, the brick and become one mm -hmm. and also they use lime to put this um, you know the stucco that you uh, cover it lime mm -hmm. is used also in it so these just lime combined with heat is just a uh, <laughs> A chemical reaction that uh, will melt uh, stuff and make them fuse together you know but uh, i don't know this is like the, the original uh, formula for it because uh, today they put some chemicals in the the lime and the mortar to inhibit this type of effect mm -hmm. or not to go for the temperature to go too high to to fuck with the brick you know so now they have um, changed the, the way they use this the mortar today because of this probably because they know that it will make them the, the wall fuse together make the brick fuse all together if uh, too much pressure is applied and heat heat so, pressure yeah all right good stuff yeah all right and that's so, right Bricks do melt. <laughs> I know that was a bone of contention for a lot of people in the beginning of this whole journey on meltology. Uh, that was one of the big things that I used to get thrown at me all the time. Oh, bricks can't melt. You're crazy. You're sniffing glue. You're whatever. Well, guess what? Bricks can melt. And we've shown it over and over and over and over again. I ain't got to prove it to none of y'all out there because it's, it's truth. <laughs> Go look it up. Yeah, we showed it also <laughs> on the last show with Rose. Uh, yep. You know. All right, so 
we're going to get into uh let's let's take a look at what we're going to break down first we're going to look at uh basalt columns let's bring up some pictures of what we're going to be breaking down today so everybody's absolutely 100 percent familiar with what we're talking about which i don't know you can't be familiar with it because they're pretty interesting and pretty crazy looking and nobody has a definitive explanation for it except for volcanologists that say that somehow these things are tied to volcanism in that area whatever area that might be giant's causeway devil's tower all these other locations all seem to be tied to some type of volcanism narrative yes uh, basalt uh, if they tell us that uh, it's it comes from a volcanic eruption to the mantle of the earth you know uh, pushing through and you know we 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 cover <laughs> volcanoes a lot and and it's a funny funny thing i said i said to myself okay so if those basalt columns came from a volcano where is the place that there's most volcano and oh hawaii so i tried to find basalt columns in hawaii mm -mm. there's nowhere there's none when they so, can't explain something they'll blame yeah, it on volcanism it. yeah exactly. and that's that's hysterical because i think you know i just i just think in myself they should all be fired so let's just fire their asses let's go down here and just do it let me see if i can find it real here real quick i have it here somewhere <laughs> where is it oh, here we go you're fired Bye geologists, bye bye volcanologists, bye bye historians, bye bye all y'all. Because <laughs> we don't need your lame ass narratives anymore. We're figuring this shit out right here, right now. All right, where are we going to take us to, Shapu? What are we going to look at? Well, uh, uh, I was looking at like what's what really is basalt, you know? And they they always say it's, it's from the volcanic and. All the volcanic rocks and all this stuff, you know, it's crazy. They all say it's from volcanoes and lava, everything almost, you know, lava flows and all of this is basalt. Basalt can grow in different, you know, type of structure. It's the cooling that's that changed everything, but. Yep. What, what we're going to get into the cooling aspect of this whole event, guys. I know we focus a lot on the heat and the heat differentials, and then we can see clearly that there was a, a super fast cooling event that took place because things are solidified mid-melt and have um, a uh, viscousness to them. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be focused more on that end part of the, the, the heat event, the X-Factor event, which is the, the cooling process that took place. Yes. What I found uh, interesting about what they say about this, these type of, of rocks, you know, basalt is just a name to define a type of uh, structure or stuff, you know. Uh, the, the names is just, again, just a name. Yeah. But they have a high iron content, just like just like bricks. And oh, really? They have a high iron content, just like bricks? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And low uh, crystal content. You know, just low silica, mm -hmm. but n just not like bricks, but uh, depending on the the one, because they say that uh, those uh, uh, bas uh, basalt stuff from volcanoes, uh, the silica is, is there's not much from uh, from there. I don't know because probably the way it, it cooled down or. Right. everything but what i found uh, interesting that uh, the the basalt uh, produced this uh soil that they call laterite and <laughs> if uh, anybody knows what uh, laterite is they say that they use this to make bricks you know they cut directly out of the earth uh mm -hmm. bricks from the, the laterite the, bricks guys you can look it up yeah We'll look, probably yeah. show some examples of it here in a little bit. Cause look, I can I can go click. You can just see. Okay. So here they they say it's laterite bricks, but you can clearly see here these are laterite bricks because they say that they cut it. <laughs> so <laughs> this is one of the funniest uh, geological uh, diagram. Yeah, take a good look at this diagram, guys, and look at what's at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they always represent the bottom part as bricks. You know? Could it be that it's a sub sub uh, baseline superstructure of brick underneath of yeah. us, guys? Could it be if it's set up like a motherboard free energy grid system that God created for us? Could it yeah. be? <laughs> but yeah, look, uh, this is what ladder right is. It's just uh, melted bricks, I guess. But uh, they say it's a uh, basalt a type of basalt rock you know so, so we're connecting the two here okay we're connecting the basalt to the brick which yeah. is important hugely important as we move forward in this presentation as i was looking at it i found this one that you found you will find like really funny jen because basalt is used in construction you know do you know what they use it the mostly for <laughs> oh i don't know tell me Shapu. <laughs> to making cobblestone, Jen. Oh, you know, cobblestones. No cobblestone. way. I just thought they were just janky old river stones that people picked up and put down on their janky roads. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So just another uh, comparison with uh, basalt to bricks, you know, yeah. because we, we have shown that cobblestone are just <laughs> bricks uh, changing uh, forms, you know. Motherfucker. That's right. <laughs> you know, so you can see that this this, this is what they call the, this magma flow is also basalt. But you can clearly see that it, they look like what uh, some tree roots or things, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know that this is not one because it doesn't melt. And also look at how it cracks here, here, all just like the standing ones. Right you know but but again if you all of this basalt look at the gen these bricks are basalt oh this brick <laughs> is basalt it's a basalt brick i know this is melted, melted basalt brick <laughs> and you, you see all of this type of thing all these ro rock they say even lunar basalt oh, <laughs> you know they go there brick, guys lunar basalt bricks <laughs> yeah like, lunar rocks are basalt not petrified wood like they they, they told us <laughs> uh, interesting yeah, yeah it was so crazy because i have some what they will call basalt right here in my hand but there's no volcano around here but only bricks and melted bricks so I don't know what what else to say for me. You know what? No. Else, you know what I gotta say. Geologists, they're nothing but ballless, soulless, spiritless, corporate little bitches, suckers of Satan's cock, each and every one of them. Boom, baby! <laughs> I cracked yeah. myself up. So, did you want to? Okay, yeah, we'll cover this basalt thing. Yeah, let's look at some basalt. Let's let's you know, um, just take it all in what we're looking at here across the plane these different yeah. locations and how yeah. they look in their formations so th this is what we know usually everybody knows these type of basalt columns you can find them everywhere one of the funny things is that most of them has these what do we, we call striations all over them like this you know uh but it's really interesting that they have all of these lines. Probably you can cut every piece of them just right to this line. You know, it's nature gave us what natural bricks, I guess. <laughs> right. But yeah, you can see that they are everywhere. Um, on every shape, every size, every. Uh... Let's stop on that one right there. Here we're looking at somebody walking over top of them. It, these things go pretty far underground. <laughs> so we're just seeing the surface here of it. And a lot of places in Giant's Causeway, you can walk over them as well. And I'm not sure if you have Giant's Causeway in here in your pictures or whatever, but they go deep. Yeah, well, yeah, we don't even know how deep, you know, they, mm -hmm. they are. I've got this location that... They're just popping out of the ground everywhere here. It's been, yeah, but they say that they were uh, structures with them you know uh, it's getting on yeah this the Ganong Padam site you know it's been showed many times lately 
other type, this is same thing. You know, this almost looks to me like it was coming up and then it collapsed over on its weight. You know, as it's going. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna get into what, how we think these things form and uh, and how they relate to the solidification process of the extreme heat event. Yeah, but you know, it needed to be malleable to to mm -hmm. make this bend. You know. Yes. But some will probably say, oh, they are roots. But, you know, yeah. I don't see that That's way. Right here is great. Let, let's just stop right here. Look. Oh, OK, so we're looking straight down at the at the um, what you could walk across there. That part there along you know, that one. Yeah. And look at the polygonal shape here. It looks just like the walls that you see in Peru. Yeah. And stuff. yeah. Except these we're looking straight down and these things are down in the ground. Yeah, we uh, we used to see it in walls, but yeah, they do. It's the same effect here on the ground. Same exactly. with the green growth thing, but oh, it, and look, look at here in these basalt columns. Some of them you could still make out levels of brick here. Yeah, like that yeah, one there. Yeah, yeah kind, kind of yeah, kind of because this is what I was telling you with these uh, striations that we see, mm -hmm. the lateral stri striation. Very interesting. But they could possibly be something like this. We, we really, really don't know. We're just showing you what we see here. It's almost yeah. like these things lifted up, lifted up as they were growing up through yes. the solidification process, whatever's on top here. Yeah, that's what we're going to show uh, later. Yes. The, Guys, we're going to get deep into this. In, in a microscopic right. level, how these things could be formed. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, why they 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 form this because when they start growing uh, or because of the cooling the recrystallization of the melt when they 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 um, touch together they stop growing laterally and they start growing like upwards that's why we see this type of of effect this uh, makes sense it all makes sense now and again just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm nowhere and this also is the salt. are those pickaxe marks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Jen. laughs> yeah. pickaxe and these suckers <laughs> yeah these striations um, again this is another effect but these ones you know i don't know how deep you know they they go we never know like these ones really i love really how they get wavy up, up top too and stuff this is great yeah I think we we're gonna cover this also in the microscopic level. Uh huh. Absolutely. Why why they are wavy like this? And then you got this one that people are talking about. Yep, this is a huge one. So this this area was impacted immensely to for it to be pushed up and out like this. And we're gonna explain all this, guys. Yeah, how it, it grew or how what uh, or if if it was something that was destroyed you know we, we don't we don't know and probably will never know but we can compare stuff and see if things like make sense a bit all right so yeah these are just the ones of the the tree uh, that one there is cool. Look at that one. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, another place, just another. It's no accident that they grew in these polygonal forms, guys. It's it's all part of it. We showed no. it on the microscopic, uh, um, the grain growth. Yeah, it's, it's, it has to be with the cooling effect of the of the melt. Mm -hmm. And you can see like this, this it's, it's almost every, everywhere. But they all say that they came from volcanoes. That's that's really hard. And because we still volcanoes are erupting today, but they don't form this. You know, you never see basalt columns popping up everywhere. No, you don't. So again, the thing with what with, what I say with Hawaii, there's no basalt columns. I couldn't find any. Maybe there are, but but I I couldn't find any. If they were, you know. Uh, they should be you know why but they they are not so it's really interesting where they come from and here you can see the, the they call it this is a basalt column 
cast uh, made from one mold from people, some civilization, they say. So this is it's just yeah. blowing my mind here. That one was made by human hands. Yes. It's not one that they carve. Like these ones, these mm -hmm. basalt columns are human make, man made, cast in a mold. Very interesting. Because you can actually, they, 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 uh, they, they were so advanced. They, they could. Let's scroll back in on that last picture. On, cause it, I just want, yeah, no, the, the pillar. Oh, the this column, one. Yeah. I want to zoom in on that. We can, um, Oh, you want to see it closer up? Yeah. Yeah. I want to look up top here. Yeah. Check this all out. Wow. Like you can see a little red in there on that one yeah, yeah. because they they tell you um <clears throat> these the basalt uh, produce the red because of the eye iron content mm -hmm. that's what what uh, they, they will sell, tell you even you can see some reddish mark but it can be cast but you can see that look here there, there's some kind of a brick pattern in mm -hmm. this cast you know? <laughs> Is good stuff, Shifo. So it, it, I cannot read, but you can hear his basalt. But this is in a museum. But I found this one, this hedging, really interesting because for me, when I look at it here, it looks like these guys are like making the the platform here for this by pouring. You can see that this guy is pouring something here and these looks like they are like uh, the same shape as the basalt columns you know this is very true i should have hit that drop but i have it on large on my head <laughs> uh marlo 1959 says they found a root system under devil's tower who is they and have you seen this root system yeah if you call it the mine shaft <laughs> you know anyway where uh, I won't and think whatever I don't just don't see how it could be possible anyway so you get these type of one Jen that mm -hmm. looks like what they are in Crowley column Crowley columns and we've covered this um actually I have Crowley columns up on my screen share thing over here so let me let me present real quick you see that stacking effect there of the basalt columns? I'm going to show you guys uh, Crowley columns real quick. Let me see here. Entire yeah. screen. Hold on. And it's going to look a lot like these ones here. Oh, those ones are amazing right there. Okay. So can you guys see this real quick? Is it up on the screen right now? Yes. Okay. So guys, these are Crowley columns that are in California, Crowley, Crowley Lake. They're called Crowley columns. You can also see the stacking here, same as the other basalt columns. There's no volcano around this area and they do not relate this. I don't think to volcanic activity. Or they might say that this is volcanic in some way, but what take note here of the columns. And then there's this huge piece on top that's straight, like as if it was uh, pushing, these were pushing this thing up. See what I'm saying here? Yeah. Again, you could see um, even in the water here, these uh, like polygonal rocks, stones and stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna come off screen share and go back to what you got, got up here. I just wanted to show everybody that stop screen share. But yeah, you know, it's good, Jen. You can see on the ground there, you can almost see like parts of what was like at the top of these this thing, what you were showing, you know? Yeah, can you go back to that last picture? But this, uh, just once again, oh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. you can see this is exactly what I just showed you in the etchings, you know? Oh, yeah. Let this thing that. right here. Absolutely, so, Shifu. That's crazy. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's so crazy. Look at this thing. This thing trips me out. I mean, this is just nuts. Look at this, guys. Just look at it. Wow. So we're here, the, it's really hard to comprehend. It actually kind on. of reminds me of the temples in India. Yes, exactly. Because when you look at these uh, Indonesian ones, you know, they, they're all made what they call basalt 
That's right. They all the, the black black with the same type of rock. They they say they they made it with basalt, but when you you uh, destroy a wall, you can see that it's a covering, and some some of them have bricks, but some of them have so fused together that they have no more bricks to you can can see, but some of them you can. So right. there's there's something there that needs to be explored more. But if if some have bricks and some other, you know, I, I maybe all of them have bricks inside of them once but the eat the eat event uh, really did something there in indonesia um, maybe these these big temples or thing were way before another civilization before another uh, catastrophe happened but uh, it's still there for us to to see again just like sodom and gomorrah and right everything yeah. I think the X factor event, this extreme heat event is cyclical in nature. I think we're maybe only privy to the first or second one. I don't know how many there was in total within a cycle of 5,500 to 6,000 year cycles. Um, I think we're probably at the fourth or coming up on the fifth and final uh, event that could take place. And I think in the very near future, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I, I've seen some people say that. It's like the the sixth or seven the, because they they base their their history on the uh, Hindus, uh, mm -hmm. Hindus their stories, Kaliugas and stuff. Or something like this, yeah. But I I, I need to say something about all of these. Um, the story of the Indians is not recorded until the eighteen hundreds when the mm -hmm. uh, the English went there. So. What is real? It's the same thing with Japanese history, Chinese, Chinese. They didn't start writing the Chinese history down until the 1800s when some yes, yes, European uh, went over there and said, oh, let's sit down and write this shit out because we need a narrative. <laughs> you know, so uh, I don't know what is really, we, we, we need nobody. We need all this shit. So let's sit down, dig out some dates and some, some emperors and put it all on paper. <laughs> yeah. Because you know the, the the history really doesn't make sense. Like these power, powers, uh, countries like India and stuff being overrun by a small island like England and stuff. It, you know, right. there has something else to uh, behind. You know, to happen, to make this happen. It's really doesn't make sense. But yeah, this make 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 the make this make sense. You know. Yeah, make that make sense right there. We're trying. We're working on it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look and at this. These type of thing just grows into this or this, you know. Uh, Incredible. But yeah, we we uh, just wanted to to show a couple of these, not everything, but when we were searching something, uh, trying to find what uh, uh, striations. Gym. just yes. today uh, we stumble upon uh, really something uh, incredible here <laughs> and when we say stumbled upon it literally we stumbled upon it guys the holy spirit's leading us in this direction because you know uh, we we were uh, the way it just came upon to us it was just almost like wow <laughs> i just don't even have words for it yeah so this what you see here it's uh i can't zoom in this is a, a microscopic view of a lithium slice. And what struck me, it's how its structure, you know, mm -hmm. look at these lithium nano rods that they call, and this here. Exactly, um, yes. The slice is just exactly the same as what we see happening here uh, with these uh, basalt columns. That's right. You know. Absolutely incredible. That looks just like that giant's causeway there and everything. Unbelievable. Yeah. So how does this happen? How does this manage to form like this? What caused it? Is it part of a building? Is it a tree? Is it a root system? We're going to get into all that, guys. 
but we have to break it all down in the science. We're going to go over the lithium and also bricks storing energy and what that has to do with all this. Yeah, because lithium now is used mainly in batteries, mm -hmm. you know, to make batteries and they use it for a lot of different stuff. And also lithium gen is uh, one of the three uh, things created in the Big Bang. <laughs> So, so, so funny. Oh, in other words, an extreme heat event. Exactly. <laughs> the Big Bang. <laughs> but again, lithium is just another word for uh, something that they described uh, some kind of metal. Just like uh, cal not calcium, but uh, the other metal that is soft like this. It's like, uh... anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah so from this we we just uh well what is oh here i can just look can brick and rock replace lithium ion batteries you know for energy but we, we covered this some time ago it's okay that, we gotta go over it again yeah but there's nothing it's just a a video to to see yes that you can really put uh, energy in bricks and stacking up, you know, and they right. make the same thing as a battery. And lithium ions are the most common that we use. Ion just mean that uh, there's a energy exchange from the cathode and anode. That's the only thing because uh, there's two type of ions. There's cations and an an anions. It just means cathodes ions and anode ions it's just uh like what we're gonna show uh, it's it uh, it will represent everything that it's gonna bind everything and like uh, the electric universe the melted building yep. the, probably maybe the trees together you know yeah because uh, this thing happens on every aspect of life and everything. This uh, in, in interchange of electrical energy, because everything is electrical energy. Everything that we see, everything that we... Mm -hmm. It's all, and not to repeat what uh, Tesla mentioned, but yes, if you want to comprehend the, the universe, you need to think uh, about... Um, vibration frequencies energy and vibration yes three six nine i it's, think it's energy frequency vibration or is it vibration energy frequency i don't know what exact order i always thought it was energy frequency vibration because then the vibration is the form itself taking yeah. form yeah but all of this uh, brings us to to see that everything is the same thing because here we're gonna get into this the science thing of uh, thermodynamics and thermodynamics is just the heat or the, the cooling of stuff and everything is the same and here they they're gonna talk about uh, mostly either crystalline um, like everything is crystalline but uh, lithium or uh, what else you know, I find it interesting. I was telling Shapu yesterday, what are they spraying in chemtrails, guys? Yeah. <laughs> what do we hear? What's the main thing? One of the main things that they spray in chemtrails? Yeah. Lithium. Yes. And I, okay, yes. Wait, I got something else. Uh, Tesla, I, Ryan, I see you're on the fence about Tesla. Tesla is just somebody who they gave the narrative to for free energy. As if he just, he, you look at the world fairs and look at um, his inventions and, 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 you know, the first time for electricity and all this stuff at these world fairs, he's nowhere to be found. He is just a cover story for all this stuff. I don't even think the man even really existed. There's only about three pictures of him at all on the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It certainly wasn't at the World's Fair next to his great inventions telling everybody how it works and stuff. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, so I don't buy the name. When we use that word, we're using it in, in, and also knowing that, you know, it's a, it's a fake narrative. They just used him as a, the cover story for this free energy stuff. Yeah, and to put a stop to people thinking that they could think of other things better because 
now they set the standard. This is Tesla stuff. He found everything. This is what you need to work on. No, no, no. There's more to it, but they, they want you to only think about what Tesla did and recreate what he did, not create something new. But that's what it does. As fervent heat is in the house, and I agree with you. History is full of actors and role players. That's exactly right. Welcome to the, yep. welcome to the chat, fervent heat. Nice to see you back around here. Yeah, Dean. Nice to see you. Okay, All right, so let's get into this. All right, just talking about this uh, ter laws laws of thermodynamics because there's one the three laws, and maybe there's another one that I don't know about it, but. You know, there, these laws cannot be changed any other way. These, this is how it is, you know, and everything will behave the same way because this is how this place was made. So th that's why they call it the law, even though it's just a word again. But these laws of thermodynamics are already complex in detail. And like we said, it's not easy to grasp in full generality you know because there's so many stuff that can just change uh, just uh, one degree of difference or any uh, uh, something happening a vibration that's not supposed to happen can change the result of your test but what is uh, interesting that in that they say here that these laws don't just describe thermodynamics whatever that might be, even say, what is thermodynamics? Whatever that might be, yeah. yeah because he doesn't really know, but you use it every day with his stuff. But essentially, it represents everything there is, you know, just like, uh, just say, a Tesla thing, you know, including the, just the life, the universe, and whatever, whatever else you can come up with. Because this law of thermodynamics is the same for everything. Mm -hmm. And that's why we, when I say, when, when I represent something melting, it's the same effect with everything. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, uh, some people will say, oh, you, you just show like ice cream melting or a candle melt, wax melting. Yeah, but to everything that melts, melts the same way. Yeah, it just matters the temperature. Yes. But a, a ice cream is going to melt at room temperature. Okay, a brick is going to melt at over five thousand degrees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, what else did I want to to show you in this one? Yeah, the first law is the energy in, in conserved. You know, it never lost. And something that I really like in the world. This is one of the best quotes of these so-called scientists you know nothing is lost nothing is created everything is just transformed right. you know just like uh, in bricks or everything you know the is just transforming to something else exactly that's how people have a hard time thinking uh, you know wrapping their head around uh cobblestones that were, were bricks at one time or the janky rock they find out in their backyard or out front somewhere was a brick at one time but we've shown that with the polymorphs and the grain grows and all this stuff that yes, beautiful brick can turn into janky old rock during, during this extreme heat event and cooling process that takes place. Yes. And this one also, I consider nature as a vast chemical laboratory in which all kinds of composition and decomposition are formed, you know, Amen to that. it's the same, same thing. And, in this one, what is it? you must trust to nothing but facts. These are presented to us by nature and cannot deceive, you know. The only facts that you can see is in nature, not in... So, like I said in before, you can listen to what we say. You can, yeah, okay, it's good, but you need to see it for yourself in nature. And when you see it in nature, that just confirms that it is real. And... It's, it's, it's all okay. So, uh, what, what, I, in this one, I think, uh, what would I want to show? Take your time, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think uh, I don't think there's much here. Steve, welcome. I'm glad you're here, buddy. Hopefully, you're not tardy. <laughs> yeah, here they 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 gonna talk about this uh, Nirvana. Uh, it's just thermodynamic equilibrium where nothing changes anymore when the, the cooling stops and the heating effect stops. Oh, this that's is... Nirvana. Oh, check that out. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they they call it Nirvana when everything is it's it's, it's equally equilibrium. Equilibrium, like you would say, <laughs> where we're at now, kind of between X Factor events. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe, because we I don't really know if things really stop because I cannot really. I think there's it. still hot spots under us, certain areas of the grid system. Yeah. It, it could probably be also that's why uh, some of these uh that's right I don't know, geysers or stuff it cannot be created or destroyed it just transforms yeah and uh, and then jen um, also lithium you know where they they get the most of them from these uh underground uh, geysers you know or what i don't know what they call again um uh, spring underground spring yeah what what what's uh the, there's a name for it uh, hi Faye. welcome you're a little anyway. late but that's okay i got you right so i don't think that in this one yeah no this one it's just a lot of theory i you went to it uh a lot of them but uh, you know, that's a lot to to get in one day. <laughs> so I know we were looking at all this yesterday, guys. So we, this is brand new for us. Okay. Um, wait. This is good here. Yeah, I want to go into this. Okay. Well, start with this one. So this is how the influence of segregation on the final microstructure. This is after the the casting of metal. Mm -hmm. uh, when it cools down so we'll, we'll see what happens after something has been melted and cools down different uh, di on different type of uh, situation so mm -hmm. we're gonna look this one is uh, also for uh, them they always put it in a container because if you don't put it on the, inside a container it will just spread out everywhere Mm -hmm. But uh, is uh, us here the container is really big, so you know it, it can go. <laughs> yeah, like a giant petri dish. Everywhere, yes. <laughs> and uh, all of this, uh, it's gonna tie everything that we've showed from the the green growth to the um, Lichtenberg pattern mm -hmm. that we see everywhere on uh, on Earth. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Jen, I can show the up eye up pictures also. Yeah, we're going to get into just, this big time, guys. <laughs> yeah, just remind me of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is what uh, the cooling effect on this uh, metal inside this container. You can see that it started to just make some um, crystalline uh, clumps first. Like we see what like I just showed you in the sintering stuff. Mm -hmm. But now after this cooling, uh, because they have start uh, to try with different cooling uh, effect, because uh, the cooling must be either really fast or really slow. If you stop it mid mid uh, cool and you you let it go, it will create some some effect, some defect, and some growing that you don't want to. Mm -hmm. And this is what it represents. Um, look how these lines start growing upwards because mm -hmm. now they just clump into together and the temperature has changed. So now they just grew, grew in a different matter, just like uh, these columns that we see. Right. And remember what we see here uh, happens on a three-dimensional level 
not only upwards. But... I, I just I just want to mention here too that the uh, basalt columns are high in iron. Yes. And bricks are high in iron. <laughs> yes, also. But also, I'm gonna tie that. To, um, no, I don't. I didn't save this. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought I saved it. Hmm. Okay, so we'll continue. It's okay. Take your time. You're doing great. No, I was. I wanted to show a picture of something, but I don't have it. Okay, so we're gonna look at another kind of a structure uh, when it it cools down. Uh, what kind of structure it makes. And this one is uh, copper. And you can see that for us, when we look at it, it looks really smooth and flat. But the structure, look, uh, when it cooled down, you can see all the grain growing together, clumping, just like, again, these uh, basalt column, mm -hmm. really similar. Absolutely amazing. Because these... Uh, here you can see they start growing from all four sides from the cube because into the through the middle. And we were looking for these triations. That's why we stumbled upon this thing. That's right. We were because, looking at striation, guys. That's how we came upon all this. <laughs> you can see, Jen, here all the same kind of striation that we we showed on the basalt columns. Uh -huh. The lateral, the lateral striations here but uh, here they, they just here they talk about temperature in the liquid drop rapidly and normal super cooling might occur despite an abundance of nu nucleation yeah nucleation is just this transformation of the the the, the atoms supercooling in the heat to the supercooling of the melt because you know it we, does we seem all... like there was there was some type of supercooling event at the end of this it seems yes there was uh, but we see that it wasn't super cooled everywhere like right at some place it took longer or it was uh, cooled by a different uh, type of thing maybe not from the the big water wave that came from with the water but with the rain you know, mm -hmm. we, we don't know, but it's different type of cooling and different type of cooling makes a different type of uh, crystal growth after the thing. And okay, so I cannot like read everything. It's going to take a lot of, of, uh, of time to, to go to, to this. I think it's this yeah. is really like a course into uh knowing how the grains uh, grow and to cast metal and stuff like this that's right but not only metal like i said everything because like he he, he said in the, this this applies to all aspect mm -hmm. in life that's because right. everything uh, melts and uh recrystallize at the same the same thing so okay um that's likely the contact of the melt with cold well, yeah he's 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 talking about the the walls here that that add effect with the the growth the crystal nuclei and grow as dendrites yes we we're gonna go into these dendrites yes this is what they call dendrites uh in all directions um here what you see when the the cooling effect goes upwards like these basalt columns yeah this they seem they to go be shooting upwards that's right and you will see uh, what we we mean with uh, this dendrite stuff we're gonna apply it with uh, what we already show in the motherboards and the earth we already this place is it's built like a motherboard that's and right mother earth and motherboards are green and we have green grass everywhere yeah. So I would just go in this one really fast again. So you get the point what what I'm doing. We could drop this link in the chat in case anybody wants to further explore it. Yeah. 
because there, there's a lot in, in that site. Uh, everything you can see, uh, everything that we're going to go through, it's on the site down there. Somebody's so. tardy. Hold on a second. Jenny's tardy. Don't be tardy. Tell the <laughs> All right. All right. So. Welcome. There's the link, guys. Make sure you check it out. Do your own research. Don't believe us. Yes. What's up, Mark? Welcome. Yes. All right. Amazing info. All right. You can see this. <clears throat> this is the grain, the fast growth direction of the dendrite in grain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So very forced more, more after the impact formation of the chill layer without super cooling. The small grain grows rapidly. And then they they put the cooling here, mm -hmm. the, the, another chill layer they had, has added already, and the, the, drank, the dendritic, dendritic growth, that they call it, mm -hmm. occurs. Because if it didn't, if it only the eat here, this grain growth will continue normally like this, go on and on and on, just like uh, the wall. Mm -hmm. But then this cooling effect just make this thing happen drastically like uh, it changed it totally to to from this form to a column form you know you know what this reminds me of where they talk about um god i forget what story it comes from uh, something about the future where some lands will disappear and sink and others will pop up will pop yes yes and this is what this is reminding me of you know because if this is an ex if this x factor event is meant to wipe everything out and start over with new landscape and everything this would all make sense yeah 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 exactly the, these uh, they grew up from the bottom because of the heat from the bottom and the cooling of the water mm -hmm. they just came out of the water Steffi's here. What's up, Steph? You're a little late, girl. Don't be tired, girl you're <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that makes uh, some sense because you know we don't believe in these uh, volcanoes creating everything and plate tectonics, but this this really makes sense. Yeah, that's right. Because of uh, because of the water in the melt, they created these so-called islands. <laughs> oh no, up. that's the parrotfish. <laughs> They're pooping out yeah. those islands, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you keep going. I got to go pee. I'll be right back. All right. All right. What else can we see? We're going to go into another. Because they, they, they talk about how it affects with the solid liquid. So when they, they tell you solid liquid interface, they say because it's between the solid and the liquid. There, I guess there's no name <laughs> for two to talk about something that's in between these these two states but uh, yeah okay and the micro structure will be textured like this what we see a different different type of of thing that's been created after this eated eating effect and here they they talk about this uh, Growing a silicon from a single crystal, you know, silicon is just silica, and silica is just quartz. The the thing that's it's in everything, like water, even in in the hair, maybe in microscopic level, I don't know. But uh, this is another type of uh, structure that they you can do while casting. Because this, I guess this, they put the heat, they put the cold, and then they still added more heat afterwards. So they have two different type of three, no, two different type of structural happening. And we can see this type of thing. If I go into my Basalt column stuff, you can clearly see the same type of thing because um, where I'm trying to find some one good one. Okay, like this one. You can see like this one. Well, I don't we don't see what's underneath here. Maybe it started to from the melt, but then something happened, it cooled down, and then something melted it again. 
So that's why you see probably at the bottom, you, you will have some time of this type of grain also. But the, now they, the growth just changed into columns. And then another heat cycle probably came. And you can see that uh, it's another type of grain growth here. Right. Just like, well, no, yeah, Jen, I just, this is another type because this is the binary alloy. They put two type of eat this, the normal eat grain, and then they cool it down and then they eat it again. So they, they create this two type of structure. That's very interesting. This could be a marker for us to see because different levels, different um, X factor events. Yeah, because here you can, how do you explain uh, this type of, uh, of growth, you know, uh, geologists, you know, all this, it's a uh, volcanic oh, from it, the, from the cooling, but why it doesn't continue on, you know, exactly. But this is probably another type of heat just hit or passed or heat wave. I don't know how does the heat propagate to uh, really something <laughs> that I, I don't really want to experience. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. But when we get into the um, that stuff, we're going to get into about the heat with the lithium and stuff and and, yeah. and the um, striations and everything should explain some of this. Yeah. And this is uh, a clear uh, melt and cooling, like a perfect one. You can see all the grain is per almost perfect, uh, clear, no no breaking, no. Like, uh, I don't know if people know about uh, uh, forging metals, but after you co the cooling is almost as important as the heating of the metal, because if you don't cool it right, it will be just brittle and mm -hmm. it's going to break in, in pieces when you, you know, and we see that in some locations where these basalt columns are, where they seem to be brittle and breaking off and stuff. Yeah. But that's the, the, the depending on how it was really made from the beginning yeah okay so let's go into another you can see here a cellular growth on these on the middle how, how it goes exactly like these basalt columns again but this this type of thing we want to go into these dendrite growths dendrites yes yes because this is what we see when we look at uh, a crystallization of water under the, the cold, you know, mm -hmm. like crystalline, uh, just a snowflake, mm -hmm. just a snowflake, like the pattern of the snowflake. When it cools down, you can see all these, um, these <laughs> they, they're called dendrites, you know, Den dendrites can be applied with everything. We, we have some in our bodies. Um, What's interesting is that that looks like when we show the mountains, when they've melted out, um, it kind of has that pattern going down either side of it. The, this one? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. The the, the, the pattern, if, if this yes. was like a building melting and it goes just like the um, Lichtenberg pattern. Exactly. exactly. It's the same, this, the same pattern. Yeah. And we're going to get into all that, guys. You're going to be fascinated when you see because this shit. They call it dendrite here, but they they call it Lichtenberg pattern because the guy found it with another type of of thing. Yeah, it's, it's but it's the same same thing. So this is what is this one? Casting on the superheat of the melt. Yeah, you can see here just uh, just uh, to see, to show like the difference in temperature, how it can affect things, because this one melt temperature at 11,000 Kelvin. This is just uh, an aluminum cast. And mm -hmm. if you just put 70s degrees Kelvin more, the crystal structure totally changed, you know, right? It's more it's coarse. It's it's what we call heat differential, guys. Uh, and it can happen in one wall. Yes, of a building. Exactly. A very because, small section of a wall even. Yeah. Because remember that these tests are made in an uh, enclosed area with n where they can control everything that ha can happen, you know. But outside, you cannot control the, the gust of wind 
or the change of temperature or just the vibration from something. There's always vibration in the air from anything. I mean, anything of this can change the, the structure. And here he says that the casting is exceedingly difficult because if you you have to have the right cast and there is, should have no leaks, you know, and should no hair. And if only a small pocket of air is stuck into the cast, it's going to change everything. Mm -hmm. Just so a they tiny have a, differential there and it could change yes. everything. Because that's why they have really hard time doing it every time the same thing, because if if just a tiny drop of water molecule just gets in fact just inside you know just uh, they call it uh, what's it called um moisture just the drop of moisture gets got it's gonna change everything uh they they talk about it in one of these these texts um all right so here uh, just another dendrites we were talking about dendrites and striations mm -hmm. this is striations happens in all of what is melting because i'm gonna show here it's not just um in, but this is uncontrolled uh melting but if you have a container that is controlled and there's no nothing probably not have striation because it's so pure mm -hmm. but if it's not uh it's gonna have striations and dendrites inside so you have the two ways this is lateral and this is upwards yep. into a melt um that's... and it's interesting how they're wavy like that because we see the columns the basalt columns they get wavy sometimes like that yes i knew uh, i think they explain why because here they they talk about the woods uh, woods blade a woods blade is just a uh, damascus steel mm -hmm. <laughs> if you know what i mean uh, people know uh, so no, this is the striation of uh, cast uh, silicon crystal inside a container very interesting yeah Somebody was swinging a pickaxe there. <laughs> um, what is this one? Oh yeah, because this this also can apply to to what we see happening, like mounds just popping out, because this is a a cross section of the the block, and the melt is below, but uh, sometimes there's a depression when it cools down mm -hmm. and it makes like a bump in the in a, a hill but mm. remember that when we talk about this melt we we're talking about the building melting from the bottom compared right. to what they're showing here that is metal melting but like i said in the beginning the melt is the same for everything um I wanted to show another one. Yeah, not this one. Oh, that. these these woods pattern that we see happening like uh, almost everywhere. And sometimes I don't know, I don't know if I have. Not so, like if you look at like canyons in Utah and stuff like that, they look yes, like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exactly. I I think I have like uh, some pictures. I can show really fast. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be here. You're doing great, Chapo. Thanks, man. You're welcome. In case anybody doesn't know, I'm just going to play this real quick. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, mountains generally are understood to be larger than hills, but the term has no standardized geological meaning. just saying <laughs> yeah i see uh, crystal makes me think of the factors affecting bismuth yeah bismuth in natural form is not like when you melt it yourself and you pull it out you know 
that's the only way you can have it form these type of thing. Um, I guess depending on the the type of cooling. Um, What's up, Crystal? We got 33 people here, Shafu. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Cool's in the house. What's up, yeah. Johnny? Look at this. Look at this kind of, of melting. That's just what yeah. you just showed on that last diagram, too, but, where I said yeah. it looked like somebody was swinging a pickaxe. <laughs> Look at yes, that. but uh, no, that's not a picture I want to, to show. I know I have one, but I maybe not have classified it yet. So, uh, no, I don't think so. You know, oh, you see that the I was t telling you about uh, this pattern, this melting pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But I think we're gonna show it uh, later. Okay. So yeah, this this type of thing you can see it. Everything and they they will tell you that they, oh no, it's the the layers and the the the, the plate tectonic squishing together that form this type of of pattern, but you know that can we zoom in on the one on the left i don't know if you can bring this in or tighten this up a little yeah this here i mean just look at that that just looks like all the landscape we see now yeah yeah mm -mm. no yeah if you look up uh high up pictures you can see around mountains and mm -hmm. and uh, this is like terracing and stuff you know exactly exactly Guys, we're learning as we're teaching this to you guys. We are we, we yeah, always because... are taking in this new information, trying to understand this X factor event. It was not just things melted. Things were, were happening all over in, in the most minute to the massive locations all at the same time. Yeah. There's so many different factors, so many different layers to this extreme heat event and uh and you know there's a lot of unanswered questions and we're trying to, you know, piece these pieces to the puzzle together. And uh, yeah. it's just blowing my mind. Yeah. Like CFM always say, and I always play that. We don't know anything. We just okay. show you and we are learning at the same time. And we're trying to figure out this thing out because we don't know what this place is. We don't know how it really works, how it was anything because we've been lied to all our life. So, so this is, look, um, they say here, they talk about casting this woods pattern, this Damascus steel, uh, to make it, you need to, to cut a section and then re reapply the heat, you know, mm -hmm. but how this striated variation of, of some impurities can cause the formation and large defect in, uh, the, the thing not even have to to cut it and make it yourself because this one they made it like this because they wanted this type of pattern mm -hmm. but it happens also if some impurities are in this uh, in the melt so hey cfm are you late i don't think you're late you're probably no, he was there he yeah was he there. was there <laughs> it's fascinating stuff it really is i'm just yeah. i'm still trying to wrap my head around this whole thing and and you know, work it in. We're working can, it in. <laughs> you can see here, you do find similar striation in nearly all single crystals. Uh, this is true back by mountains of literature. <laughs> <laughs> and what are mountains? Gee, well, geologists certainly don't know what a mountain is. <laughs> yeah. And then you will find some similar striation in nearly all cast solids if you look for them, you know. And, here, oh, and you, can, you, you might not see them with the naked eye even. They no. could be microscopic. So right here, you, you can clearly see a, a molted gold. And you can clearly see that it has created striations. Exactly. On it. Heat striations, guys. Yep. That's what we're talking about. All right. Uh, Okay, it's quite simple. Single crystal growth as complex art. Yeah, yeah. Because in in one of these, uh, he has a machine that he can create some crystalline stuff by uh, heat and uh, pressure in in your, his machines mm -hmm. in in his lab. But he talks about uh, all of steel and other stuff because they're all all the same thing. They're all crystalline uh, materials. 
Johnny, you better be careful. <laughs> he's, he's driving, trying not to crash. <laughs> Looking at his, right, his screen and stuff. You need a cell phone holder that's in front of you, like on your dash, so you don't have to really take your eyes off the road. They have them at truck stops. Look, uh, you might have one. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Jen. I, I didn't read this part here, but uh, we can uh, read it because you wanted to know what striations are. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here you see that the striations arise from the fluctuation of the growth condition, such as change of temperature, cooling rates, pressure, or convection in the solution, or the melt. Or know. the melt. Now, the reason we were looking up striations is because I think Rose was asking me, uh, well, what is heat striations? Can this is something I can look up? Like, what are you talking about? We, we saw them, you know, a couple of years ago. I've been calling them heat striations since day one in my book. Um, but we didn't have the science, if you will, behind us to fully verbalize what it was we were looking at. And I think this really ties it all together. Yeah. So let's read that one more time about the striations. Oh, okay. No, striations arise from fluctuation of the growth conditions, such as changes of the temperature, cooling rate, pressure, or convections in the solution. That's what is uh, in the, the, the solution that they used. Or here, uh, in, in this place, we will call it water. Mm -hmm. Or the melt, you know, mm -hmm. or in, in the melt, <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> And CFM show tonight is called uh, Into the Melt, which I oh, love. Oh, yeah, nice. Yes. Uh, the one I did with Rose, it was called Into the Melt with Rose 777. Yeah. We love going into the melt. <laughs> but on this end of the show, we're going into the cooling process mostly. But the heat has to come first. Yes. But the, here you can see that they, they continues with these fluctuations. All of these change temperature, cooling rate, pressure, convection, lead to temporary changes in the growth rate. Mm -hmm. and thus to change the impurity of, of the, the the thing that you, you you are talking about could be anything because can be a crystal can be metal can be bricks can be rocks can be anything uh, mm -hmm. water changing to to uh, a solid it's called ice <laughs> yeah people thought bricks cut and melt and then they see that they're all melty and runny and, and solidified mid melt drippy and stuff and it's like oh okay so yeah. a hard brick that, you know, my ma my house is made out of bricks. If the heat was right, this house could melt down into a liquid form and then it would solidify. It would be have a, um, uh, a viscous shine to it even. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here, the only question is what causes those fluctuations of the growth condition, you know? There's more than one answer to this. And he said, they wrote, they're inventing constitutional supercoolings. This is the supercooling that are just uh, contained in the container and uh, controlled. And it shows a picture of striations and called banding. Re he's calling it banding striations. Interesting. But banding, I could see that as a term. Yeah. For it, I could see me using banding instead of heat stray. I, I personally like heat striations as straight to the point. If you don't know what banding is, but yeah. But the by caused by the convec convection in the melt. So in the melt, the temperature can variate. I guess depending on the structure that it's it's getting into. Mm -hmm. I guess vibrations due to some motors you know just the vibration from something close to it can change everything right and the road rotating because some I of these people just rotate some stuff like yeah, in centrifuges something like this and then and god knows what other kind of external di disturbance can <laughs> cause this problem. And you know what? It's funny because I was just going to say on the on the on the macro level, there was so many different levels, yes. and differentials, and things happening in different locations, uh, wind, water, all this stuff happening during the event. That yeah. you know, this is why we see so many different things across the plane. 
so many different levels of heat damage. Something's really muffed up. They say it's ancient. It's older. Uh, could it have been from three X factors ago or the last X factor? You know, those are up for debate until we find clear markers that we can define one X factor from the other, which I don't think personally we'll be able to totally figure that one out. I think in certain locations, once we know what we're exactly what we're looking at, we'll be able to tell uh, one event from the other. But in what order it happened and the dates and all that stuff, I, I don't think we can give that to you anytime soon. Yeah. Um, what did I see? I see like... Uh... Right, that good striation, not quite fair. No, okay. First, the solid liquid interface faces. Solid liquid again means just in between, not a solid, not a liquid, but in between that state. Mm -hmm. They're always in a cha chaotic scale. That means they they're not like uh, achieve nirvana, and they're not. They're always in on the move, it, like. We're talking about these the molecular structure inside it. It's not mm -hmm. stable. It can change, like uh, in any way, just by we we just read anything. You know, we I don't know why, but when you just read that to me, I thought of earthquakes. Yeah, because uh, the we don't really know what's going on below us, and if there's heat differentials and hot spots and stuff like that, and things are moving and on the and changing. You know, they try to tell us that magma is on the move. And it's moving from chamber to chamber and all this, you know, all this crazy stuff with the, on their volcanism narrative. But yeah. what if that's not the case? What if it's this? Yeah, exactly. Because we're talking about a macro level. This is describing micro. If it can happen on a microscopic level, it sure as hell can happen on a macro level. It, the size doesn't really matter at that point. No, no. And we we, we read it. Uh, the first line that we that I read, he, he just stated that it's not about this or it's about everything it affects every state so uh what uh, fluctuation in other words there are no such thing as steady state on small time distance scale no not this one um Melted and inverted drugs. realm. I guess you're a little late. Yeah, in the beginning, we covered the grain growth and polymorphs, which we've covered on other shows in the past. We've known about that for about a year now. But I wanted to bring that up again and go over it in case anybody's missed it or they're new to the channel, which leads us right into this new information about these dendrites and striations and polygonal forms and basalt columns and things that were happening after the extreme heat once the cooling started. Yeah, we're comparing these dendrites to these uh, basalt columns. That's what we're, 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 we're trying to do here. Because here they, they call it the theory of uh, the dendrites, what, how they are formed after the, 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 the cooling event. All the dendrite grows a certain length per time unit. You know, they, they have calculate in their tests. But also in the space between the dendrite, you know, solidified at the same speed, same distance behind the, 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 the dendrite. So it's like, uh, just like the, um, the basalt columns, you know, it's, uh, they all squish together, uh, yes. growing. Yes. And, uh, um, there's something that I want to. I don't think it's in this one taking pattern. In case you didn't, I'm talking patterns, formation, self, -organi self organization here, just like the walls mm -hmm. creating order out of chaos. You know, again, this is just talking about the, the large part of theoretical physics that they already did, but they did um, the melting in. Uh, real and they did test in the computer, you know, with the mm -hmm. data that they they gathered afterwards. They just tested on computers. So they made the simulation. Yes. Gotcha. So nevertheless, self-organized pattern formation happened quite a lot in very different systems, and we see it uh, ourselves in the in uh, these poly polygonal walls and everything you know yes 
because you know the polygonal walls they look kind of crazy like the ones in uh peru and stuff yeah but yet i guess once it solidified it found its nirvana yes you know what i mean because they're like how can you have an eight-sided stone with all these other ones perfectly fitted to it and stuff and all this it looks crazy to us but it's it's felt it finds it's organized nirvana i guess at that point yes. once it's done and, yeah and this this quote just re resumes it uh, everything that striations mirroring the liquid solid interface geometry are expression of rhythmic rhythmically advancing interface obtained by self-organization and that's wow. what we see in the melt mm -hmm. That, we uh, see these heat striations and we see them sometimes they're wavy going up the walls they're going sideways kind of um diagonal sometimes they're going in a semicircle yeah they call them pickaxe marks <laughs> okay so this one what was this one um oh they call it uh, this one oh it's the dendrites Okay, this is, we're going to compare these dendrite growth with uh, the Lichtenberg pattern that we see mm -hmm. uh, everywhere. And as, as nobody knows what is the Lichtenberg pattern. Um, Keeping in mind that this place is set up like a motherboard grid system of free energy. So when we get to this part, when we start showing satellite views of these um supposed mountains and different things like that you'll see exactly what we're talking about guys yeah I'm just gonna show one uh, a pa really pattern that's <laughs> man i've got so many but anything like any of this but this is uh, just rivers but um Like like this, like what what do we you see here? Uh, these type of patterns, just like a wood uh, electric um, or a, a lightning bolt, you know. Like this, this, these exactly. type. Of, these are like Lichtenberg pattern. Well, also the same pattern as the dendrites. Also, the, this one kind of them. This is like another kind, but look. They call it dendritic pores in silicon. So the, these are like not, um, these are like voids in the, the silicon. These are pores. It's not like something that grows out. It's something that's not there, <laughs> you know. You know, see how straight these are too here? And we're going to look at pictures, satellite view, but that one that we looked at in Iran that was a satellite view and it had these long straight mountains yeah you know, real close together and stuff yeah here here they are straight because they're in a control control environment you know uh -huh. that's why they are the, the, all, almost almost perfect but this is how crystal can after the the uh, melting uh stuff um, recrystallize when it when it's cool cooling down this is how everything uh, works and it's like uh, no not this one i wanted to show i think it's going to be sooner than 2040 in my opinion it could be 2026 2027 maybe oh my gosh look at this this is cool and what does it remind you, Jen? Of? <laughs> this is what happened to a cross section of a, a cooling stuff, but they have put, um, I've read it, uh, they have changed the oscillation of the pattern of the, the, uh, the vibration, the oscillations of the, the energy mm -hmm. that they go goes through they're stopped it and re restarted but at some point when they stopped it like this one stopped like growing uh -huh. but this one just 
exploded. It looks like a volcano, like uh, <laughs> in dried pattern. Wow. You know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and then they continue, and they there was another one, but the, uh, the this one continues to to expand and to I don't know um, because it's it's hard to explain uh, everything that they 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 are. Uh, showing here because i need to to read more of this but in, in fast it's the uh, the energy going into this they, they're trying to grow this crystal and these bumps are appearing and these explosions like in in the crystal you know <laughs> angela just got here and she admitted that she's late <laughs> Filter. Angela, you're going to have to rewind. You missed a lot. You're going to have to get notes from the person sitting next to you in class. And uh, there's going to be a test uh, next week. So this is this is really heavy stuff. You're going to have to catch up. <laughs> Here, they, they try different modulation of frequencies. You know, in this one, they had a constant current going through. Mm hmm with the modulation, with the, they say wrong frequencies, I guess wrong for them, for what they, they were trying. Mm -hmm. But this one, the the, modula, the the current modulated frequency is 33 megahertz. Oh, of course, 33, right? <laughs> but like, it, it creates like a, a, a clear uh, straight pattern, exactly the same all the way. Just this, just like these uh, columns, you know? Um, yeah, you can even see the little like a uh, um, uh, wave pattern in it, like these yes. stackings, like the columns and probably columns and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. But these are the same thing, but different frequencies, different uh, exposure to it, but it creates different kind of uh, a structural. It's not even a structure; it's pores in this. And you, you, you see what, where I get with these uh, dendrites. Because we, I just compared it with these uh, Lichtenberg patterns on the, the plane. Mm -hmm. the, depending on the oscillation, oscillation is the frequency of the, 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 the current. Depending on it, you know. It, it crystallizes uh, differently, and also in what solution it crystallizes in. But in the melt, or in the water, or in in a potash that is just water with uh, salts, so it's water and melt. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So they they just explain uh, how the current can change uh, different state from some things but this is the the interesting <laughs> part you can see that these ten ten dendrites dendrites sorry they are constant always on top this is the growth from the the crystal uh -huh. but the dendrites are all uh, all on top they just uh, just continue on top but uh -huh. not this is a constant state. This is controlled. And this one is a dendrite burst model. It's still less not controlled. Just they, they let it go. Mm -hmm. But you can see that these dendrite just comes together and form one big clump, you know. Wow. Into into it. But still probably the, the structure of the dendrite is inside, so it makes it brittle and liner. Like these striation lines uh -huh. probably visible all over it because of this it's still inside but at, maybe at one point it's gonna cover it all and be just one big column because of these dendrites uh, stuff do you want to take a quick break we're at two hours and four minutes no i just want to i 
because we're in the dendrites. Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, we're done with the dendrites. I'm just going to show. Yes. Okay. No, Jen, I'm, I think we're almost done with. Uh, okay. These. No problem. I'll just show what I meant, to, uh, why these dendrites or something. Um, dendrite growth. All right. Okay. So these dendrites, like I showed you, grow on any parts and lithium also. And lithium, now we, we know that there are batteries. And uh, here, this one, this is a motherboard. And this is two chips of the motherboard. Uh -huh. And and we always talk about these buildings on the motherboard. They're like chips creating different kind of, of thing, oscillation, vibration, energy. Mm -hmm. But you can see here the dendrites like growing. Yep. And they're similar, really similar to these uh, Lichtenberg pattern going everywhere at this place. That's right. And you can see they start from either. Uh, either component and kind of meet up in the middle component. there. Yes. Yeah. And we're going to see that when we look at the satellite photos of these supposed mountains that were actually buildings that yeah. show this effect. And this is like uh, the, the dendrite, the different type of dendrite growths that uh, can appear on uh, lithium uh, crystals. They can be spheres like, just like I showed you the basalt uh, can be a sphere like. Yeah, we see a lot of those spheres around. And it can be like a pillar. A pillar. <laughs> just like the basalt column. Yes. It could be close to fibrous, mm -hmm. a mix of, of both and just interlace together, like we mm -hmm. see in other places. And this the facettings. And like you said to me, Jen, just like the crystal growing inside these caves. That massive cave in Mexico that has the huge white pillars of crystal that people walk over and they have to wear special mm -hmm. suits and stuff. That's what that picture looks like to me. And I I, I added like a mesa, like mm -hmm. a, a place here. But yeah, what um, this is just <clears throat> a formation of dendrite depending on the orientation of the grain. But here you can see that this dendrite grows all the way and this is the melt the melting point everything that's melted you know, interesting that the dendrites actually have you know the little lines in them just like we see in the basalt columns you know yeah these are the striation we just exactly. yeah because they create these type of striation also the lateral ones <clears throat> but did you this reminds me of a a cavern you know when they go into caverns oh, yeah, underwater yeah, yeah all these uh, stalactite and stalagmite grows mm. but in the water how can it they grow in the water but maybe they were formed by the heat and and stuff you know uh, just uh, a thought and um i just want to show one thing this is just how a uh, lithium battery uh, works you know a cathode anode and here, this place is made just like a battery. Mm -hmm. You see the ion sphere, ions. Mm -hmm. You know, this is where the ion, uh, where the the barrier is of the ions, ion and sphere, yeah. yep, just yep. there. And this is. And what were they doing? They were building these buildings all the way up to the heavens. Yes, and you can see the Earth is the up negative into the ionosphere, and we're gonna. Explain how this all ties into this. Yes. Guys. And it, this is, okay, this is a battery, a lithium battery. And if you want to know how a battery gets caught on fire with Tesla stuff and thing, because there's too much high energy discharge between the, the anode and the cathodes, and the dendrites are formed inside this battery. But when the, the dendrite pierces the, the separator because of the too much energy, it causes mm -hmm. short circuit and burns. But the funny thing, if if I put it this way, you see, and, and we talk about these dendrites thing, 
could be piercing that line in the middle being the ionosphere yes this is the ionosphere and if we build like a building or a mountain or anything that grows past the ionosphere it creates a short circuit and you know it could probably be the reason why this place I've been destroyed. And I was telling uh, Shapu about the Tower of Babel, what it says in the Bible that, yes. you know, this thing was built to the heavens. And, you know, God said, you know, look what they're doing down there. We need to stop this. <laughs> yes, they, they want to, to, to go meet God. So they, they built it the highest they could be, but maybe they, they built it too high and it caused the, the short circuit to all of this. So it's just, uh, just a thought that I had when I saw this and mm -hmm. it's really gets into this. And this is just another uh, type of dendrite growth. Yes, you can see how it grows. Like it's this one, you can see that the cooling st uh, stopped here and start started back mm -hmm. because it, it started to grow. But it, this is a smooth surface and this is like the, the irregular type of thing but you you can see that even this <laughs> this type of irregular pattern looks like uh, things that you could actually see here on earth i think i even got the picture uh, somewhere uh, yeah like this like this look look at that wow just melted stuff right there. But yeah, we can, we can go. Uh, this is this, uh, just another comparison with these striation that we see. This is things melt, not, not only melting, but the same way of uh, liquid flow. Mm -hmm. It start with these striations and then the more the more there is the more it looks like a flow and a melt and it looks a lot like what we see in that fort with the melted brick yeah this 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 type of formation you can see it everywhere uh, you know even in the canyon um, uh, we didn't show it but we will yeah look look at all of this and i'll show you afterwards so okay jen Really How long do you want it to go? Oh, just a you know a little break. Okay. Let me see here. Regroup for a minute. Yeah. Put a little song on. Let me see yes. what I got here. All right, guys, we'll be back in three minutes and fifteen seconds. <laughs> Tell me it was all in my head. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, mountains generally are understood to be larger than hills, but the term has no standardized geological meaning. Melt Allergy 101, baby. Once you see the melted bricks, you won't fall for their lame ass tricks. Geologist, you're fired. Boom, baby. 
baby. guys we are back i got my pepper kitty in here <laughs> yeah mine is right there yeah i haven't really heard her much during the show today she must be she's under... just looking now she she's a good cat she's because we usually don't live stream in the middle of the afternoon and my this is siesta time for my cats pepper just woke up and the other ones are still sleeping so that's probably why she's so quiet <laughs> i don't know she's just looking at me right now i don't know what she oh oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's funny okay. all right so now we're going to get into some uh some folders of photos i think i got about 20 minutes before my husband calls me to come pick him up for work all so right. let's oh. look at some landscape stuff and melted buildings Hi. Okay. I was just talking about this this pattern that I uh, showed, like the melting yes. from the flow. You know, it starts like, uh, and, and the more it goes, the more it it gets scattered and chaotic. You know, it's like this or like this. But I'm not. Oh uh, yeah, you wanted to or like this. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. that's crazy looking. Or this. Or what oh, do we see in Petra? Melted steps, nothing to see here. <laughs> or just like this. It's free flowing with because it's flowing so much that it creates pockets of air between the flows and that's why it's like this to me that's what i see that's all some other people can see other stuff it's okay as long as you don't buy the narrative that they they give you you know exactly all right so yeah we're gonna look at uh, you wanted to look at these high up pictures yeah. yes because this is where the money's at right here <laughs> these are the money shots Oh, did I pass the, my folder? All right. The poo's got a lot of folders. Yeah, a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, so these are satellite images. Satellite <laughs> images. <laughs> yeah, they 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 all taken from a uh, high up plane. Yeah. There's no satellites. Or if they are, they are on the balloons, like you just said. So as you can see here with these mountain ranges around this circle here, you could see that these must have been massively high buildings and that they pierced the ionosphere possibly and melted down out and away from each other, causing this, um, what is this called again, this effect? Dendrites effect? Oh, yeah, the Lichtenberg Dendri dendritic. <laughs> dendritic effect. 
um, yeah, I, I have better pictures of of this type of thing. I'm gonna go to the mountain. I have so much stuff uh, that I have to look for, um, but the juice will start after this. After the war, yeah. Okay. Yeah, these these type of things. All right, guys. So this is what we're looking at here. Now, this is on a macro level, not micro. Yeah. So we weren't kidding when we said these had to be massive buildings. Yeah, because this, 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 yeah, this, this one, the same thing. This is this thing here. Exactly. And you can see how it's, it's coming from a central point outward. Yeah, always. You know, always from the highest point toward these these planes, because mm -hmm. geologists will try to tell you it's because of the erosion from the rain. But you know, <laughs> I don't really buy the totality of it. Yes, it could erode, but not when it was there. You know, it's only eroding that the rest, the loose materials. <laughs> That is crazy looking. Yeah, you can see all these Lichtenberg pattern or dendrite growth from from the melt, because then these dendrite go, growth uh, don't don't grow unless something has melted and then cool cool down. You know, mm -hmm. like every crystal that exists had to be melted before it it, it has been created. Wow. Not just have a crystal just like this, you know, it needs to come from somewhere. And what we, what we are entertaining, the theories that we are entertaining here is that they are, they come from buildings. That's that right. this place was maybe all built before anybody was here. And then, then we left off with with everything we have the, all the possibilities we can create many stuff and we we made stuff maybe too too high to 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 like yeah, like it said to to get close to god and we destroyed ourselves this is one theory or the the other one that it's a god's judgment you know both can work maybe both are uh, the same thing we don't know Yep, we can only go by what's left over here, guys. And we're trying to figure it out. Yeah. This is why we see this type of crazy melted out stuff here that we can't even really make sense of. Yeah. And all of these, uh, what we know as rocks and stuff come from what the melt you know, that created the, the, the structures melting created everything that we know today sand rocks um, crystals salt uh, and I, I i i still going by my my theory that uh, all the precious stones that we know came from probably the the leftover bodies of the the population like crushed uh, compressed and just like they make uh, diamonds today, like false diamonds, and you can. Right. But false diamond, you know, <laughs> they're almost exactly the same as the real ones. So. Wow. Yeah. This is just so compelling. <laughs> Yeah, if you look at all of this now, it's it's really hard to to make. But from my up, you know, you can. But if you get close, like uh, in the microscope, you can more see the details, and you can see that probably they these are like rock uh, everywhere and remains. And that's the, yeah, the this the one thing. here. I love this one. Yeah, because you can clearly see that something was really big here at one point that just melted away 
in all of these, you know, when we, we when I was talking about, oh, I didn't show it. I didn't have the picture I was looking for that these dendrite uh, thing, they are on, on a three dimensional level, you know, not only lateral and upwards, but everywhere at the same time, you know, when mm -hmm. they grow. Because uh, we in the pictures that we show, you only see like a 2D model, you know, uh, the Y and Z or the, I don't know what, what else, lateral and upwards, <laughs> I don't know. And below. Or horizontal, horizontal and vertical, mm -hmm. but there's another uh, dimension that is the other one to make it the, the treaty, so. It grows in all direction at once. Yeah, what else? Uh, yeah, like this, this, what this? I don't know what this thing was, but it was crazy. <laughs> it seemed to be one massive interconnected building. Yeah, you can see the and it's, some kind of it melts it spread out from itself coming outward like that. Yeah. That's amazing. This is why throughout all this stuff, all these places they go, be like, oh, we just stumbled upon some ruins in this remote location. It's like because oh, the whole thing was a building. You find a little pocket of survival here. Yeah. Yeah, buildings and houses and people just living everywhere because I believe that there were much more people back then way like way more people this and is they, this one's really cool it, you could tell this one was much higher it's melted down into itself and away from itself here and spread out yeah because they're trying to tell us that there's too much people now these globalists and stuff that that's totally untrue. There's not enough people in their cities to make more money. That's the, the thing, you know. Mm. There's so much space, places that people can go, but people just are clumped into packs because they have been raised this way, you know, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, you can clearly see the flow of all of it all of these were much much higher these ranges that they call mountain ranges uh these much much higher look up into the sky here with this cloud bank is this line of delineation at the top here between the, the blue sky way above at the very top and below this line these these buildings had to have least have come up to this cloud bank line which is close to the ionosphere i would assume yeah it must be really high but mm -hmm. we know how uh, they're the biggest mountain is so it's really oh cool. that one there it looks like an explosion the next picture next that one there we oh, this, that. yeah the trinity crater stuff it's it's really really weird yeah this is crazy yeah there's even this this thing this imprint of something there you know yeah then you can see that the, this cracking there that comes from this thing the central point right yep that i don't know what it is whatever it was it was a component on this grid system for sure yeah and then that thing there that looks like something you would see in nasa nasca yeah looks like there's some kind of a, a structure <laughs> or left over a structure there it's crazy how it's emanating out from that like that yeah and this, Jen, you were wondering what these uh, uh, wires, like in computers. Yes, that's what it looks like to me. Wire strips. Mm -hmm. And it would lead right into this crater right here, which could have been a massive component on this grid system here that fried and shorted out. Yeah. But they blew something up here. You know. Yeah, they probably blew up whatever they didn't want you to see that was left there. Yeah. Because there are the, the like I told the, already the there's some craters they they have created craters with bombs 
that are as big as these meteor craters that they are selling you and they're the same shape so mm -hmm. which one i i know there's no meteor craters so uh, maybe they're all bomb tests at some some sort uh, yeah these these ones you can clearly see all the uh, all the, the, the Lichtenberg patterns here. Right. You know, everywhere. I'm going to look something up while you're doing this. Yes, go ahead, Jim. This, I don't know what it is. These are like it's... This one here. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to screen share real quick because that one that we looked at, that it had the crazy uh, parallel lines leading into that blast zone there. Let me share screen real quick. Entire screen. Here we go. Share. Okay. Uh, it's this one here. Okay, guys. This is what it looked like to me, what I was seeing. See that, Shippo? Yes. It was on a circuit board here. See these lines? coming in here just like at that, that spot that you just showed and look at the way it's all melted out and muffed up like that you can't even really make out what these components were how that could be that right there could be like one of the that goblin valley in utah <laughs> you see what i'm saying yeah let me see if yeah. i can find another one here okay here there's this one yeah you can even happening. see like the lines that you were talking about Yes, Going yes, I dropped it. I'll put it back up. That's why I picked this one because you can see the lines right here coming into it. And then let me go back to this one that I was just on prior to it. Oh, no. Shit. Hold on. I don't know where it went. Oh, yeah. Here, this one. Look, this. see how this one looks like it left a crater? This component melted away and it looks like a crater in here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. And uh, there's another one. Again, this one's obliterated. Now, uh, the things that are around it look pretty good, surviving pieces. But what happened here in the center? You know, it's all melted yeah. away and all muffed up. Oh so. yeah, yes. And let me see if there's one more I can show. Maybe this one. Let's see, let's zoom in on this one here. Well, they could say that's Hawaii right there. There's Mauna Loa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys understand what we're getting at here on that one. Let me come off screen share. Yeah, that was, that was good, Jen. It's I good like that melted inverted round Petra fried. That's exactly what they should call Petra. Petra fried. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I got maybe show a couple more can end it up okay so that right there looks like that pattern that wood pattern that they were trying to produce in that controlled experiment oh yeah yes yeah yeah i don't know i clearly see something melted here you know because they they would tell us probably that this is uh erosion from water or uh, some ancient ocean that was there. Ancient ocean ago. in the desert, always. But deserts weren't there before, you know. Yeah. Probably all made up. I love fried food, but not fried buildings. <laughs> Jenkified. I like that. Jenkified. <laughs> you guys in the words that you use. It's so funny. Janky, muffed up jack wagon melt. <laughs> Look at this. We got 29 people here. Welcome, everybody. Anybody's coming in late, you're going to have to rewind. There's going to be a test. Yeah. Again, here, even on this picture, you can see that this must have been one long building. The melt came from the top down, uh, also underneath, but the way it branched out in the melt, it's coming down, flowing on either side. 
where you're just left with this faint top part that looks like almost a straight wall here. Yeah. Oh, that one below the one you're just about to click is crazy. Click the one below that one, Chapo. Yeah, that one there. Look at that, guys. Just look at it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it is. Mm -mm. This make is what, the, what, Jen? I said, we make it make sense. Yeah. At least we're trying. This, right? Yeah, this is like the St. Andreas fault where they, they say that these uh, two continental plates collided. This is how they explain this stuff. I'm looking now, Crystal. Okay. You can see these Lichtenberg or dendrites indentation. All right, hold on. I got to bring my Facebook back up. Um, Crystal just sent a couple of pictures. All right. from, Go ahead, Jen. Just uh, do it. With, um, 35,000 feet. I'm done. Okay. Let me get in the screen share. This is from Crystal. Mex New Mexico at 35,000 feet. Uh, entire screen. There we go. All right. Can you guys see this? Yes. Look at that. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Zoom in on this. Wow. Yeah, the electrical surge was crazy there. And look at it over here on this side, too. Coming up through here. Wow. All right, got one more picture that goes with this. I'm going to go this way. Yep, this one here. Look at this. It only went so far. Yes. That's crazy. Look at this square pattern over here. I wonder what this is here. See this right here, Shapu? I don't know what that uh, is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Very strange. Big, whatever it is. It's huge. That's what she said, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Just wow. Johnny Cool says janky electro melt. <laughs> I like that one too. That's a good one. Some janky electro melt. <laughs> All right, let me see here. All right. So I think we we, you know, at least scratched the surface on this um this new idea of uh yeah. There's my husband. Hang on a second, yeah. guys. Right. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah. No, we, we, we just scratched the surface because we I had like more 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 stuff, but oh, we're gonna have to, to definitely cover this again, uh, the rest of it on another show, like recap and then continue on. But I do have to get out of here and go pick him up and do dinner, and then we're gonna be on uh at least It'll be 8 p.m. Central Time on CFM's channel. Um, just depends on where you are in the country, but it's 8 p.m. Central. Yeah, for, for me, it's 9, so. Right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We love you, and I appreciate all your help, Shapu, with trying to figure this out and put it all together. We can go over more tonight on my show. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I just, you know, I felt like there was so much to pre present that we needed to get some of this out on, on a separate show. But I would love to go over more of this. We're going to have an exciting night tonight over there on CFM's uh, show, Into the Melt with Jen and Shapu. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to play a little video on the way out here. I love you. I love you, Shapu. I love everybody out there in the audience. And... Like Thank I always you guys. Say. Thank you, Jen. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you tonight. That's right. Let it not be said that we stood by into nothing. We're trying to figure this shit the fuck out. We might not have it all right, but I think we are definitely on the right track, at least. Uh, being able to uh, verbalize this in some type of legitimate scientific mannerisms, if you will. <laughs> yeah, just comparisons to, to what we see on the macro and the micro. It's... Yeah. 
and like it was explained it's uh, all the same aspects so all right guys we are out of here love you